After listening to Addicts and Number 39's story about Taggy al Muluk was immersed in thought. When he had decided, he stood up, got on his horse, took Addicts with him, and returned to his father and Number 39's capital. He left Addicts in a separate house, sent him food, drink, and everything he needed, then returned to the palace. See the prince. He immediately noticed that Taigi al Muluk was suffering from something, because he was very pale and depressed. My son, exclaimed the king, tell me what has happened to you, what is it that you suffer, and why are you so thin and pale? Taigi al Muluk told his father the story of what happened during the hunt, about the meeting with Addicts, about his story, and finally, about the princess sit at Dunhia. My child, said the king, you are the daughter of a king, whose territory is very far from us. We cannot reach it. Forget her. Go to your mother and number 39's palace, where there are thousands of maids whose beauty can compare with her. Whatever suits your eyes, I and number 39, LL just pointed out. And if you don and number 39, T like any girl, then I will marry the daughter of a neighboring king, even more beautiful than the princess XIT at Dunhia. I don and number 39, T want anyone but her. Tager al Muluk replied, My heart is dedicated to her, who skillfully embroidered the gazelles. Either she, or no one. If she doesn't and hash 39, T belong to me, then I will go to the desert, and will wander there until I go to another world. Well, as you wish, said the king, but you must give me some time. I will send a messenger to her father to ask for her hand in marriage. If he does not agree to give you his daughter in marriage, I will lead a powerful army against him and destroy that country. I pray to Allah for help and hope that you will be happy when you marry the person you love. After that, the king called Addicts and asked, Son, do you remember the way to Camp Now Island? Yes, my lord. Addicts replied. I want you to go there with my prime minister. The king told him. Yes, sir. Then he called the vizier and assigned him to take care of the prince and number 39's business. Go to the island of Camphor to ask the king and number 39's daughter for Taggy al Muluk. The vizier and addicts prepared, and Taggy al Muluk returned to his palace and again immersed himself in painful reflection. The illness did not leave him, but became even more tormenting. At night, the prince and number 39's condition became even worse. He cried, and lamented through his tears. In the night I have no consolation except tears of sadness, the passionate fire burns my heart. Ask my illness in the stars who brought me suffering. Dot. I am alone, holding a burning love and torments do not pity me. After reading the poem, the prince lay unconscious all night. It wasn't an hash 39, t until morning that he woke up. Opening his eyes, he saw a servant of his father king standing next to the bed and calling him into the palace. The prince went with him. When they arrived at the palace, the king saw that he was pale and yellow and had changed a lot. He reassured his son, advised him to be restrained and promised to do everything in his power. After that, he provided for addicts and the vizier to prepare for their departure, giving them a lot of money and valuable gifts. The two of them spurred their horses day and night, and finally arrived at Camphor Island. They stopped on the riverbank and sent messengers to inform the king of their presence. Less than an hour later, the king and number 
s mandarins came out to welcome guests five or six kilometers from the capital people welcomed the messengers and solemnly invited them into court attics and the vizier respectfully greeted the king praised him gave him gifts and then stayed for three days to visit on the fourth day, the Prime Minister came to the King and reported the matter for which they had come here. After listening to the Prime Minister, the King bowed his head and thought very hard, because he understood very well that his daughter hated men and definitely refused to get married. The King finally decided, he sent a servant to Princess XIT at Dunhia and told her the story the vizier told. The servant walked for a long time, then hurriedly ran back to the king and said, Your Majesty, I came to see the princess and tell her the story about the purpose of your trip. But the princess was furious, took a stick and walked towards me, as if wanting to smash my head. When the god ran away to escape death, she still shouted after him, and quat. If my father the king puts pressure on me to get married, I will definitely kill my husband, and then take my own life. And quat, after a moment of silence, the king turned to the prime minister and addicts. You have heard how the princess responded, especially you know her intention. Please calmly return and report to King Zuleiman Sok that the incident is so ironic. You convey to him my wishes for good health and say, The princess hates men so much that she is determined not to get married. After hearing the king and number 39's answer, Attics and the prime minister set out to return. They walked without stopping, and finally arrived at the capital of Zuleiman Sak. When they reported to the king, they recounted everything they had seen and heard. Hearing the story of the Prime Minister and Attics, the King sent a messenger to announce the gathering of troops, declared a holy war against the King of Camphor Island, and then prepared to depart. When he learned about the King and Number 39's edict, the Prime Minister came to him and said, Your Majesty, please postpone it because the King of the Island is not at fault. I told you that when people informed the princess about our proposal, she replied, and quat, if my father the king puts pressure on me to get married, I will definitely kill my husband. Then he will take his own life. And quat, meaning, the one who refuses is the princess. Hearing the prime minister say that, the king was very sad. Worry about Taigi al Muluk invaded his heart. Thinking for a moment, he said, If I wage war against the king and the princess and number 39's father, win to capture her, but she kills herself, then the war will not bring anything useful. Useful. Having made that decision, the king told the story to Taigi al Muluk. Hearing clearly the situation, the prince said, Father, I have decided to personally go to the princess to find a way to win her heart and marry her. This decision is solid. I will never give up on it, even if I have to change my life to make it. How can I meet her? The king acts. I will disguise myself as a peddler, replied Taggy al Muluk. If you feel you don and number 39, t have enough strength to cope with everything, take addicts with you. The king said. After that, the king opened the treasure chest, gave his son a lot of money and treasures, provided a merchant caravan worth hundreds of thousands of gold coins, and let the prince prepare to leave. At night, the prince and addicts went to addicts and number 39, S house to sleep that night, but could N and hash 39, T sleep all night. He prayed to Jehovah the creator of both worlds to let him meet his beloved. He whispered, when will I see you again? 
I will use gentle words to soothe my petrified heart. End quote. Because of loving you, I suffer day and night. And hot tears flow from my eyes. End quote. Left behind a dream of flowers. End quote. While saying those words, the prince again shed tears of pain, and addicts also cried with him, because he remembered his faithful cousin Adixa. They kept staying up all night in tears and sadness. In the morning, Taggy al Muluk got up, put on a merchant and number 39's clothes and returned to the palace to see his mother. The queen wished her son good health. After listening to her son and number 39's story, she gave him 50,000 gold coins to eat. After that, she said goodbye to her son and prayed for him. Receiving his mother and number 39, S wishes, the prince went to see his father and asked for his permission to leave. The king wished his son good health, gave him 50,000 gold coins, and then ordered servants to set up a tent outside the city for him. The prince stayed two days in the tent, and on the third day he set out. The farther he went, the more attached he became to addicts and once said to the young man, Brother, I will never part with you, because I love you very much. My prince, Attix exclaimed, Now I think that my life is meaningless without you, so I am ready to die at your feet. But my prince, my heart still misses my mother sadly. If we achieve our goal, the prince replied, Your heart will still be at peace, because your mother will always be by your side. Just like that, they shortened the journey. The prime minister advised the prince to endure, to reassure him, and addicts delighted his ears with strange stories about his past life. They kept walking, day and night without rest, for two months. The long journey tired and tormented Taggy al Muluk. He had to say to the prime minister, Prime minister, why have we kept going and still not reached that country? Do we still have to go further? No, your highness, the road is almost there. Long now island is very close by. The prince calmed down, they continued walking, cutting through the steppes and deserts. Addicts continued to please the prince with his funny and thrilling stories, and with his wise conclusions. Thanks to that, they have maintained their spirit, day and night, constantly moving forward. They went on for another two months, and one morning, when the sun had just risen and illuminated the world with its radiance, white glowed in the distance. What a number 39! S that white moon over there. The prince asked his companions. Your highness, said Attix, that is the fortress and the walls that you desire. Taggy al Muluk was overjoyed and they moved forward even faster. When the city was in front of him, the prince was so happy that he forgot all his suffering. They stopped next to the city wall dressed in merchant clothes and entered the city gate. The prince rode ahead, in very luxurious clothes. In the city, they stopped at an inn called Enquat, the tobacco house Enquat, to unload their goods and put them in storage, while the mules and camels were taken down to the stables. They planned to stay there for four days. The prime minister ordered the innkeeper to give them separate rooms, and he led the guests to a house with spacious, fully furnished rooms. Tager al Muluk, Addix, and the prime minister went into separate rooms, arranged their things neatly and rested, and did not forget. To think of a way for the prince to meet the princess, because Tajas al Muluk was perfect. Completely forgetful and Don and number 39. T know what to do. Addicts and the vizier finally decided. Your highness, said the vizier, if we stay here and sell in this house, 
we will not achieve the desired goal. Dot. I just came up with an idea that, if Allah wants it, will bring us success. Do what you think is necessary, replied Taghi al-Mulik. The advice of the elderly is always useful, especially your skill, because all our affairs are directed by you. Tell me what you came up with. Your Highness, replied the Prime Minister, it would be wiser to buy a large shop in the cloth market, and you would sit in that shop and do business, because everyone both high officials and common people need to wear. If you sell there, everyone will have a chance to admire your wonderful appearance. Then, if Allah wishes, the work will proceed well. Use Attics as your assistant because he will work for you and introduce you to buyers of fabrics and other goods. After listening to the vizier and number 39's words, Taghi al-Muluk said, What a wonderful and wise thought. I agree. He took out a beautiful new ao dai from the trunk, put it on, and went to the market under the escort of servants and servants. He gave a servant a thousand francs of gold and ordered him to buy a large store and arrange everything as he wished. When they arrived at the market, the merchants were amazed by the noble appearance and beauty of Taghi al-Muluk. They said to each other, and quat. It is true that this beautiful and noble boy has come to us from heaven. And quat. Others exclaimed, and quat. Maybe this is an angel disguised as a guy. And quat. But Taghi al-Muluk and his servants still walked around the market without paying any attention to these things. After being shown the merchant and number 39's shop by the merchants, the prince immediately went there. Seeing Taghi al-Muluk coming, the merchant respectfully stood up and everyone else stood up as well. He greeted the prince, the vizier, and addicts, invited them to sit, and received them with great pomp. Looking at the vizier, seeing that this was an old man, serious and mature, and that next to him were two young men, the merchants thought that he was the father of Taghi al-Muluk and Attics. While the merchant welcomed the guests, the prime minister stared at him and appeared very satisfied. The merchant is an old man, has a dignified appearance, and has a pleasant way of speaking. Around him were servants, maids and slaves. Inviting the customer to sit next to him, the merchant asks, Dear customers, what business do you have here? We have a very important matter, the Prime Minister replied. You see I am no longer young, I have struggled with the years. And the boys are my sons. I have traveled with them throughout all lands and seas. In each country, we stopped for a year so that the boys could rest and get to know the inhabitants of that country. Finally, we arrived in your country, chose a house and now want to buy from you a store located in the middle of the busiest market. I will leave my two children in the shop with the hope that they will mix the interesting with the useful buying and selling and expanding their knowledge, getting acquainted with the customs of the people of this area and learning the art of buying and selling. Cover and accumulate. With great pleasure, the merchant replied and glanced at the boys, admiring their noble appearance. And education, he liked them very much at first sight. So much so that he felt ready to serve them as a servant. He led customers to a store in the middle of the market. There was no store larger or more conveniently located. The room was very large, and the shelves were made of ebony and ivory. Tuong, disguised as a merchant, very happily agreed to buy the store. The merchant immediately handed over the keys and they returned to the inn, where the cloth and other goods were kept, and sent servants to carry the goods to the store. All of these goods are very rare. 
Then the Prime Minister, the Prince, and Attucks went to the shop to set up shop. The next morning, the Prime Minister and two young men went to the bathhouse. After bathing, they dressed in expensive clothes, applied perfume and went home, because the merchant was waiting for them. Coming out of the bathroom, Taggy al Mulek and Attucks looked like two leprechauns. Their cheeks were rosy, their eyes were sparkling, their faces seemed to radiate a halo of light. They walked like two moons moving in the sky, their bodies were as balanced as sphinxes. Seeing them, the merchant stood up to solemnly welcome them and said, I wish you good luck, peace and joy will always be your companions. Dear sir, Allah will reward you. Taggy al Muluk replied politely. Why Don and number 39? T you come to the bathroom with us to cool off and rest. They respectfully held the merchant and number 39's hand and led them to their shop, giving him respect, because he was the merchant owner of the merchants in the city and treated them very thoughtfully, introducing them to a good shop. The most convenient place at the market, although they advised him to go to the bathroom to rest after a working day, the boss still did not agree. But because the boys kept talking, he also fell in love. Because of the old man, they went to the bathhouse a second time. After that, the merchant invited them to his home, but they thanked him and returned to the inn to rest after bathing. In the morning, Tajas al Muluk, the vizier, and Attucks got up, and after washing and praying, they had breakfast. When it was time to open the shop, they left home and went straight to the market. The store has been cleaned and decorated beautifully. The floor is covered with rare carpets, on which are seats upholstered in silk. There were also two benches here one worth more than a hundred gold coins, covered with splendid fabrics commonly used in kings and number 39, palaces. Taggy al Muluk sat down on one bench, Attucks sat down on the other, and the vizier sat down on the chair between them. The servants stood waiting for any command. Rumors of new merchants appearing with their rich shops quickly spread throughout the city, so people came to buy some fabric or something or just to see Taigu Al. Muluk. A few days later, everywhere in the city, people were talking about the young man with a noble appearance and bright pink face. More and more customers flocked to the shop, so one day the vizier had to tell Taigu Al Muluk and Attucks to let him return to the inn so he could have some peace and quiet to think about his work and find a way to achieve his goal. Destination Taigu Al Muluk and Attucks stayed behind to trade and talk to each other in their free time. Taigu Al Muluk just sighed and kept saying to Attucks, because sadness was invading his heart. Oh. How nice it would be if someone from Princess Satat Duhia came here. One day, as usual, the prince sat in the shop and looked out at the street. Suddenly he saw an old woman walking towards him, escorted by two slaves. Passing by the shop, the old woman saw Taggy al Muluk and was very impressed by his beauty and noble appearance. She stopped in front of the door and exclaimed, Glory to the creator of beauty and perfection that stills the heart. Taggy al Muluk answered her, There is nothing more perfect than what the king of your country has, sir. Taggy al Muluk said and bowed to the old woman, then invited her into the shop. Following his signal, Attucks also stood up to welcome the old woman, with a smile on his lips ready to serve her wholeheartedly, while the prince invited her to sit on a chair, holding a fan to keep her cool so she could rest. Enjoying such service, the old lady lovingly asks, O laurel wreath of beauty and greatness, tell me, 
What part of the country are you from? Taigi al Muluk politely replied, Sir, no, as Allah is my witness, this is my first time coming to this country. I stay in your magnificent city for entertainment. I hope your presence brings joy and good luck, the old lady said. Now tell me, what kind of fabrics did you bring here? Show her something beautiful, because beautiful people always like beautiful things. Hearing the old woman say that, Taggy al Muluk did not understand, but his heart suddenly sobbed because of a premonition. Attic squinted his eyes and winked at Taggy al Muluk, and he immediately understood the signal, so he said to the old woman, I have many beautiful fabrics, sir. I also have goods that are only for royalty, king and number 39, s daughters. Please tell me who to shop for so I can choose the appropriate product. Through that invitation, Taggy al Muluk wanted to know the old woman and number 39, s words clearly. If so, then show me what kind of fabric is worthy of XIT at Dunhia, daughter of our king Sakraman. Hearing the princess and number 39, s name, Taggy al Muluk was extremely happy. He ordered Attics to bring the chest and take out the most precious and beautiful fabrics from it. Placing the pile of cloth in front of the old woman, he said, Please choose a cloth suitable for the princess. These types of things are never available to merchants here. The old lady chose some cloth worth a thousand gold coins and asked, How much do I need to pay, dear? Sir, why do you ask like that? replied Taggy al Muluk. What is the use of talking about things that are not worth much? I won and number 39. T accept a penny from you. Thanks to Allah, I have the honor of getting to know such a wonderful person like you. Very satisfied with Taggy al Muluk and hash 39. S words, the old lady said, May Allah always bless you, a wonderful boy. Say it with grace, your voice is as wonderful as your face. What is your name? Dear sir, my name is Taggy al Muluk. The prince replied, This is the name of a king. The old lady exclaimed, So why do you wear a merchant and number 39? S. Clothes. Because they loved their only son. His parents gave him such a name. Attics quickly answered. You are worthy of your name, the old lady said. Let Allah protect you from the foolish eyes and evil intentions of those who are jealous of you and your enemies. Having finished speaking, she chose the fabrics she liked and left the shop, deeply admiring Taggy al Muluk and Hash 39. S. Beauty, well-proportioned body, polite voice and generosity. Returning to the palace, the old woman went to see XIT at Dunhia and exclaimed, Mistress, if only you knew how beautiful the old cloths bought for you were. Looking at the pile of fabrics, the princess admired their splendor and said, Dear mother, these are wonderful fabrics. In this kingdom, I have never seen anything like that. The seller of these fabrics, said the old woman, is even more beautiful than my goods. He is truly an angel fallen from heaven, or the owner of the gardens of paradise, whose gates were left open for him to come down and do business in our city. That wonderful boy was a foreigner who came to this capital with rare goods for fun and entertainment. He truly dazzled and moved the hearts of those who saw him. The old woman and number 39, S words touched the princess and number 39, S heart, so she said and laughed scornfully. Allah will punish you, poor old woman, stop irritating me with your insulting words. Dot. It and number 39, S obvious you and number 39, re crazy. 
Mistress, said the old lady without hesitation, take these cloths and look at them carefully. The princess looked at the cloth again, and saw that it was a very precious cloth. When she learned that the merchant did not take money, the princess was even more surprised, because these were unprecedented objects. She said, You are right, by Allah, the bundles of cloth are wonderful. Mistress, said the old lady, if you see that fabric seller, you will have to admit that, in this world there is nothing more wonderful than him. The princess said, I have to ask him if he has any requests, if he needs anything. Whatever you need, we will help you. Go to that merchant at once to give him my greetings, and to say that we are glad of his presence in this country, and that we will gladly and enthusiastically respond to any request. What are his needs and desires? The old lady got up and went to the store immediately. When he entered, Taggy al Muluk and Hash 39, S. Hart almost jumped out of his chest with joy and happiness. He stood up and respectfully welcomed the old lady. He held his hand and invited him to sit next to him. Sitting and resting for a while, he passed on the words of Sit at Dunhia to Taggy al Muluk. The prince was extremely happy, his heart beat fast and his soul was as excited as at a festival. Filled with emotion and happiness, he told himself, and quat. The moment to realize my dream is near. And quat. Madam, he said, do you agree to deliver to the princess my letter and bring back here her answer? Very pleased. The old lady answered. Taggy al Muluk sent Attics to bring a pen and paper so that he could write the princess a letter telling the purpose of his trip here and asking her to marry him. After posting the letter, he gave it to the old woman, asking her to deliver it to the princess. Please do it now, the old woman said and was about to return to the palace, but Taggy al Muluk held her back gave her a wallet containing a thousand gold coins and said, Madam, please accept the gift. This small gift is for me to express my love for you. The old lady received the wallet, thanked him and left. When she returned to the palace, XIT at Dunhia immediately asks, Nurse, what is your request? Just say it and we and number 39, LL get it done. Mistress, the old lady replied, he wrote this letter, I don and number 39. T know what is there. The princess took the letter, took it out, read it and was extremely angry. Has it come to this? Even cowardly merchants dare to send me love letters. Because of anger, pride and pain, the princess scratched her head and blamed herself. How miserable I am. Who am I? Who is? He. Now we understand the market people. I swear by Allah, if I was an and hash 39. T afraid of sowing mistakes in my soul, I would have ordered him to be hanged right in front of his shop. What is written in the letter? The old lady asks. What made you worried and angry? How could he know that the letter was about an angry person and number 39? s complaint, or about a merchant demanding money for cloth. Get out! The princess shouted at the nanny. That scoundrel wrote that he wanted to marry me. Everything is just at your house. Without you, how could that bastard know about me? Mistress, replied the old woman, you live in a noble palace, where no corruption threatens your youth. So what does the barking of tasteless dogs mean? She is the daughter of the Lord of all nations, so she has nothing to fear. Don and number 39. T scold me just because I brought this letter home, because I don and number 39. T know what and number 39. S written there. It would be wiser to write him a letter of reply, 
threatening a severe punishment and eliminating all such insolence. Receiving an answer like that, he will surely become wise again and not dare to touch her again. But I in number 39, am still afraid that when he receives my letter, he will become even more immersed in his wishes and become even more insolent. The princess answered, No, no. The old lady exclaimed, When he learns of her anger and the threat of punishment, he will give up his cruel grip. Thinking for a moment, the princess ordered paper, copper pen and ink to be given to her. She wrote as follows, Be wise again and remove from your heart all vain desires. Waiting for you is a terrifying threat just because you Don and number 39. T. Recognize your identity Don and number 39. T. Reach for luxury with dirty hands from fire, sun and bright moon, Allah created man if you sink deep into arrogance then I will have you hanged. After posting the letter, the princess called the old lady over and said, take this letter to him and say, and quat. Stop that crazy voice immediately. And quat. Please obey, the old woman said, took the letter and left filled with joy and excitement. From the palace, she returned to her home and peacefully spent the night. In the morning, she went to the store to meet Taggy al-Muluk, who was eagerly awaiting her presence. Seeing her, the prince jumped up happily, ran over and invited her to sit down next to him. The old woman took out the letter and gave it to him and said, Read what is written there, but Don and number 39. T. Forget. X.I.T. at Dunhia was very angry when he read your letter. He can only reassure her with funny and funny stories. The old man relieved his sadness and joked so much that she had to laugh and pity him. Then she wrote this letter. Taggy al Muluk thanked the old woman, then ordered addicts to give her a thousand francs. Then he read the letter. When he learned what was written in the letter, he mourned in pain. The old woman loved Taggy al Muluk very much and comforted him. Then she asks, Dear, what is written in the letter? Why are you crying? How can I not cry? Tagio al Muluk exclaimed, because she threatened me with cruel punishment and promised to hang me, if I did not give up my intention of marrying her. But if I cannot marry her, then death will be easier for me than life. Now, take her letter, and let her do as she pleases with me. Pray to Allah to bless your life and youth. The old lady answered, my thoughts will always be with you, and I swear that I will try to tie your destiny with the person. Your heart desires. Madam, exclaimed Taggy al Muluk, I must reward you well for every step you take. I know that you are very wise and skillful in everything. She can overcome any difficulty with ease. We will pray to Allah, the Savior for everything. Then Taggy al Muluk took the pen and wrote the following lines. She threatened me with punishment, but no corporal punishment is scary to me. Without love, life will become meaningless. After finishing writing, Taggy al Muluk sighed deeply and then sobbed again, so much so that the old woman could not hold back and cried too. Finally, she took the letter and said to Taggy al Muluk, Don and number 39, T. Cry any more, my child. Please calm down and wait. I will find you the girl you dream of. Having said that, the old woman stood up and returned to see XIT at Dunhia. Continue reading Part 4 of the Ancient Story. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. 
Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.